Laura Rittenhouse, and I've just had the pleasure of speaking at the first ever all-female investing conference at the Berkshire Hathaway meeting. And I've got three amazing guests with me, Mr. Vishal Misra, did I say that? Vishal yes. Misra, Daniel Town, who wrote, has written the book Investing. Vishal, you run a fund. What kind of fund? It's a small private partnership. Small private partnership. Okay. And I run a uh, uh, non-profit. It's a non-profit. It's called a non Punch Card. Called to solve this problem of underrepresentation in the investment business. Uh, so our mission is to promote long-term investing orientation amongst uh, segments of population which are underrepresented in our business, which is mostly females. The delta in females is the highest. Uh, so society is about 50% half females, but investment business is, you know, low single digits. Um, so that's what we are trying to attack the most. And uh, uh, so I run this nonprofit. Uh. Interesting. So, so um, the reason you came to this conference is because this is the field that you you were. The reason I came to the conference is because I want to learn what do people think, like what are the ways to solve it, and uh, we have our own ways which we are trying to contribute. Uh, our first was a conference in New York City where we brought in speakers, long-term value investors, and uh, uh, students from our demographic, you know, uh, mostly females and African-Americans. Uh, uh, so that was one. And then this year, we're trying to organize a research contest. Uh, we'll be approaching uh, female-only colleges, historically black colleges. We'll be approaching professors and request them to feed a team of students into our research contest. Uh, and what we have, what we provide is a large pool of industry professionals who can mentor those kids. So they will, uh, they will, there'll be a lot of interaction back and forth between the kids. And uh, hopefully, you know, we'll have a lot of good research reports written by these kids. I think you need, yes, that's, that's, can you pick up, you're picking up the... Uh, okay. So yeah, so that okay. my, my objective yeah. was to learn of all the thoughts, like what, what goes wrong uh, uh, and how can industry change? And I've learned a lot already. Uh, so uh, it gives me more things to think about and how can we, Go do our programming going forward. So that's wonderful. So Danielle, can you add uh, what made you come to this? Well, of course, you were speaking at the conference, <laughs> so the food was <laughs> wonderful. She uh, was on our call to action uh, panel. Um, what What do you think? Um, I'm going to then speak to Mr. Bob Robotti. But but what do you think? What do you hope was gained from this conference? I think the conference was about women understanding, first of all, the ways that we are literally held back in real life by simply being a woman in the world of finance. I think the conference was also about understanding that men and women really have a part to play in making these changes and getting more assets under female management. So first of all, women have uh, the same or better abilities in investing as men. And this is, my first question was, do we have any stats on that? And it turns out we do. There's the hedge fund index, which has, be, has a subsection, which is the women's hedge fund index. And the women's hedge fund index has actually outperformed the overall hedge fund index by, I believe, 4.3%, which is considerable in the world of investing. So women are not worse at, at investing than men. They're actually better based on that stat. Uh, secondly, how do we help women get more assets under management? Well, with those kinds of results, it has to be a bias. There's no other explanation for it. So I think one thing that came out of this for me was that each of us within our own spheres of influence, within our own worlds, our own jobs, our own families even, we can support women to uh, become comfortable around money, to start taking action and ownership over our money, and have more power over the results of our money. And as we do that, this is steadily going to change. So this, this is a, so these are profound, this is a profound time. And I think we've been so fortunate to leverage the uh, excitement and the visibility of the Berkshire Hathaway meeting to advance this. And for the people just tuning into this YouTube, our conference was kicked off by none other than Warren Buffett. And when I asked him, what do you think about an all-female investing conference? He replied, way overdue. 
and then he elaborated. But I'd like to hear what Mr. Bob Rabadi has to say about this. And by the way, in a sense, Bob is the father of this. I don't know if he wants to claim paternity, but <laughs> he's, he certainly planted the seed. <laughs> of uh, Two years ago, Bob took it upon, he, uh, you can tell us what you do and, and why two years ago you decided to host um, a, a, a panel, a, a, dis, a meeting of female investors. Um, hi, I'm Bob Rabati, Rabati and Company Advisors. Um, it was actually four years ago, Stephanie Boss is a person who was with me and said, gee, there's really no women events and women are significantly underrepresented. And of course, that's what we're looking for is undervalued investments and what, what is the, what's the crowd ignoring and where's the opportunity? And clearly there's a huge opportunity. And so to be where everyone is not is something that was a great opportunity for us to, to piggyback on that. So, you know, the idea of women as investors especially as value investors, it intuitively to me does seem to make sense. You know, you, you mentioned it in the talk today, and that is the way women's brains are wired, you know, to buy and hold, and instead of being reactive, which men tend to be, you know, it's probably men generally are not good long-term buy and hold kind of investors, and women are better wired for that. So the idea that they're not here, they're underrepresented, clearly there's an investment. I do think there's one thing that we do talk about here a lot. Uh, Mr. Buffett, of course, did say value versus growth. And of course, it is unfortunate that we do talk about men versus women, because it really should be about investors. And so therefore, to think about it without regard to, to that sex part is important. Of course, it, you, know, that's the, you can't then ignore that there's a significant underrepresentation. So those are some, and, and what I had today, really, I came away with is raising consciousness is so important, I really do think, because my experience is as a, an owner of a business 34 years, I never get resumes from women looking for internships. I always get them from men. So there really is something kind of earlier on to get women to think about it differently. And so that's the one walk takeaway I had is, uh, you know, I'm a trustee of a 200 person girls school in New York City. And the idea of hosting an event, to try to get people at that level at a younger age to think broadly about investing is an opportunity for them as a career. So, you know, that was a great takeaway for me. That's something I can do to really have an impact. So that's a great, in fact, I think maybe we, we would just, uh, I'll offer some ideas as well, but I think for the audience for this um, video, here are some other takeaways that you can take away to build awareness about the, the problem and the opportunity. So, um, one of the, uh, one of the uh, studies I've seen, I'll have to get you the actual statistic, but the reason that women often, women man man manage funds, outperform male funds is because they trade so much less. And it comes down to just the fees. The fees are less, so they, have, they can return more profit to their investors. Uh, so they're not as driven to, uh, to, uh, to trade. Um, I think the, the, the uh, takeaway for me from this is how important it is to tell people, in fact, it was very funny, I mentioned this, that it's important to tell people about these gross statistics that define the size of this opportunity. And one of the statistics is that in the US, I can't speak to Germany, but I would be surprised if it's that much different. In the US, out of all the investment funds, only 3% are managed by women, and those funds manage only 1% of the assets, of the capital. That's extraordinary. Women, you know, we're, we're, we're whatever, 52% of the population. So, so that's, but people don't know that. Uh, another statistic is um, the fact that because of um, demographics and, and, uh, and the inheritance factor, uh, women, control, they own, they hold assets uh, that represent about 40, 40, 61% of the wealth in this country, and yet, why aren't they giving it to women investors? And so these are the points that we need to educate people about so that your uncle, your mother, whatever, say, I want to talk to a, a woman fund manager. I want to talk to them and give them my money. I, I think I think that's a great point, and I just want to say that one thing that many women can do is exactly what you just said, Laura. 
ask to talk to a woman fund manager. Or if you have somebody who's your investment advisor who helps you with your family funds, make sure that they're speaking to women fund managers. And we don't, they don't have to actually choose a woman. They, you choose the best person. Make sure that you have women in there amongst the group from which you can choose that best person for your family money. Takeaways that you can you'd like to hear this to give to this audience so they can join the party and, and spread the word. Well, that's what it really is. I think it's spreading the word and raising the consciousness. I think are important steps to kind of make directional change. The idea of having a broad group of people and including women in that process, you know, therefore to make a selection process based on a full scope. Uh, evaluation, you're going to make a better decision, yeah. no matter what the selection is. Yeah, that's and I think being, point. I think being conscious yeah. of the bias that's yeah. there. I mean, there's a study out of Harvard that uh, two resumes next to each other, one with a man's name and one with a woman's name, every time they chose the man's resume, despite them being exactly the same. And if they could choose two of them, then they always paid the salary of the man to be higher than that of the woman. Mm -hmm. And just knowing that you're doing that can actually make you make a different decision. And just knowing that you are thinking about having women fund managers amongst the group that you're looking at can help you make a different decision and avoid that unconscious bias that does seem to be there. Michelle, you do this day in and day out. What can you, uh, how, what, what would you like to offer to our audience? I think, uh, I think as an industry, it has to change a little bit because uh, one statistic is that you know, a business school, which in a half, 40, 50% could be female, but you see like 90% attendance of males in an investment conference. Another statistic is that half the banks hire big investment banking uh, uh, analyst classes. They almost half incoming class these days is female. But as you go up, this female just drop out. And we try to think hard about it, like what's, what needs to change for the, at least you're getting to the, in the business school level, you're getting at the investment banking analyst class level, which is like a fertile ground for, for investment, but what, what's going on? So we think, uh, I think industry has to change as well because there is this, uh, there is this perception uh, that, you know, you have to be at it 12 hours a day and, and, and you know, uh, whereas, uh, whereas, you know, to make it a little bit more, you know, for different lifestyles, you know, a little bit more flexible, so make it more welcoming for, uh, so that you can spend some time with kids. And uh, so industry has to change as well because there is something, if a role mo if a female uh, thinks that a role model is, is a, but she's a career woman because she sacrificed her family, it's not, not very appealing to, to many women, uh, I think. Uh, so uh, you, you have to have like, you can achieve this life work balance, which I think our industry can offer. It does not have, you don't have to slave uh, 12 hours a day. Uh, so I think industry has to change to sort of, you know, uh, it, uh, to be, be, make it more welcoming for women, I, uh, based on some of the conversations I've had. So we have our agenda laid out, and I want to thank, oh, sorry. I'd like to thank um, uh, uh, the sponsors of this video for giving us the platform. And uh, we wish you all very well and carry on, carry this message uh, wherever you go. Thank you, Laura. Thank Thumbs you. up. <laughs>